go. So, I uh, actually played Kelvin last week at Herrick P. And he's playing the, the double belittle build, the yellows and the reds. Double belittle, interesting. Yeah, you know what? Probably good. Probably solid in the mirror. Because it's, it's not like you're going to have time fast. to shackle up. Yeah. The, the deck is incredibly fast. Being able to I mean, uh, fish up either the resources or the, the red non attack is actually crazy. But it looks like Brendan has the. Uh, Art of War in hand for next turn, so next turn is definitely going to be big. We're seeing the invert get pitched. Not much you can do this early on in the game. Yeah, getting stuck with no, a no attack hand is pretty bad. When you're stuck going second here, you're basically just making a rune chain, swinging a sword, backing up. Yeah, yeah, I mean, three damage isn't what you want to be pushing. No. And I mean, the Howl's out of the hand, which is, I mean, fine enough. Uh, probably not exactly what you want to be seeing in this matchup anyways. Probably want to be playing zero costs out of Banish, not your twos. But it'd be nice if it, you know, had a target. Looks like two Minoisms he drew up into. I can't tell if the other one's a Blood Deck card. There you go, one Shackle. I would love to see it. A Ghostly Visit. Do we know what we have in the arsenal for Kelvin? Uh, I'm not sure. I didn't see what he tucked down there. I do like the white history pack rune chant, though. <laughs> you know, for permanence on the board, I think the white border looks pretty solid. All right, Shadow of Urser procking the go again with the banish on Riftbind. <laughs> so he's going to be coming in for at least three attacks this turn, maybe more. I assume Brandon just takes the three here and moves on. Yeah, I'm assuming so. I think Kelvin also took the three last turn, right? Um, yeah, I, I would assume he did. I don't think the life totals yeah. are updated. Uh, yeah, this matchup really just comes down to who's stuck blocking first. Whoever blocks first pretty much loses. I mean, yeah, yeah assuming everybody gets even enough flops, that's kind of what it ends up being. But... You know, if you flip the dream off of Banish, then you can block and, you know, manage to return a little bit of tempo. Yeah. Or, in Brandon's case, in Brandon's case, he, he did Arsenal the Art of War, so he's got, you know, the first big power card of the game. It just depends on if he has the space to play it, depending on what Kelvin comes in with this turn. But a lot of thinking going on on this block. I think he took it. I... Uh, Kelvin's just deciding what he's playing next here. Oh, sorry. Kelvin. Yep, you're right. Mavrian Skies in hand. Mavrian Skies in hand. I mean, this is going to be a four attack turn. Yeah, you could play the Mavrian Shackle up. Ooh, even better. Hal from the Arsenal. Shackle Rift Bind for seven. I would assume you just bank your ghostly for next turn in, our, uh, in the banish. Yeah, and I, is that a minimalism in hand or? Uh, I'm assuming so. It looked like a Sea of Shadows. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. I mean, either way, you're never not pitching for Rosetta, right? At this point in the game. Uh, not in the mirror, no. You definitely want to just press the damage as much as you can. I don't think you care to Arsenal. It's either that or Unhallowed Rights. It's hard to see. I'm sure we'll find out in a second. Yeah, it was on Halloween, right? <clears throat> so we're pushing for a total of 14 damage on this turn with the Ghostly Visit set up for next turn, which is pretty good. Um, and I think, you know, that's, that's probably what Brandon was hoping to do last turn when he had a good chance to, but just didn't draw any attacks in the hand. I can't tell what that last card in his hand is. He needs it to be a blood dead attack so he can banish for the Art of War. Oh, miss off the top. Oh, he has the rift bind, so he's good.
Selecting plus one as well. Makes sense. Get so many cards already on this turn. They hate to draw the command and conquer when the other person didn't arsenal the card. Yeah, although it's not it's not a bad card to arsenal on your turn and then just use it as effectively a replacement Rosetta. Um, yeah, rip the husk away. Yeah, I mean if if that's if Kelvin draws, you know, short on action points on his next turn, and he does have something left to Arsenal. Owl, Minoism, Shackle, Riftbind, Rosetta, Arsenal. Oh, there's a mod. Yeah. I mean, I, again, unfortunate that he just, you know, we're seeing what, seven, he's representing two, three, four, five, six cards on the board right now, and only one of them's an attack. I'm guessing that's a red minoism then. Yeah. I mean, it is only one attack, but it is an attack for 12, so it's not the end of the world. Yeah, it's But I, yeah. I mean, but Shane on Art of War, you want it, you want it to be a bit more than this, right? Because he's only presenting two more damage than Kelvin did last turn, and Kelvin ended with Ghostly Visit and Arsenal, and it yeah. didn't cost him a power card, right? You're effectively only doing 16 damage on Art of War, not, not what you'd want. Oh, okay. Trying to get that early value out of Skullcap. Presumably going to be trying to push a lot of damage on this turn. Brandon's arsenal the C and C, so that may come into play next turn. Invert. Ooh, there goes the soul reaping. And I mean, yeah, soul reaping is gone. But if I were Kelvin, I wouldn't be unhappy with any of this. Oh, he's got the belittle in hand. Can you back it up? Oh, and he's got an Art of War. He has a Shrill. It looks like behind the Art of War, so he'll be able to reveal to it. Yeah. As long as it's yellow or blue. What a card. Brill is very good. I don't think we have any. Is he gonna hit the art of war? Okay, no. All right. <laughs> okay. So it was a blue shrill. Oh, we're banishing the little. Interesting. And I don't think we have any good targets in Brandon's yard for invert yet, do we? There's enough targets. I just don't. You probably just want to bank on these. And... Yeah, I mean, it, there are targets, but they're they're blood death play below to banish targets, right? Attack wise, yes, I think so. Yeah. The non attacks, you're okay. I mean, now the question is, does, is, is Brandon reconsidering playing out that CNC now that we've seen, you know, that there's an invert in the banner zone? Or is he going to sit on it for a turn, depending on what the rest of his hand is? I think you want to throw the hunts, right? like ASAP. So here comes the shrill. Can't tell if it's blue or yellow. Directly at two. Uh, it'll be six or seven in the Art of War. And this turns on Rosetta as well, because we started with the Gorganian Helm. Yeah, and I've seen he had a Shadow Puppetry in hand, so it's going to be Puppetry into the, the Ghostly Visit into Sword. That's a good line. It's not bad, considering you need to get the Bandit off of your uh, Art of War. I mean, is there a world where you 
you play out the belittle, find a minnowism, have a mediocre turn, arsenal the art of war, see what you draw next turn. I mean, yeah, I would probably want to play the five card hand with art of war, knowing that I had the husk to fall back on to uh, yeah. protect my arsenal regardless. That's probably and it, my line of thinking. Uh, even if you, yeah, even if you know the CNC is coming in, I think we've seen two howls already come out from Brandon. So the odds are, because I'm pretty sure, oh, well, I guess puppetry could buff it as well, but your armor would cover that too. And you've had the, the shrill in hand with the belittle. So revealing the shrill to belittle, going to get a red minnowism, and then playing, I don't know if it was yellow or not, but like you're essentially doing uh, three into 12, right? If it's a yellow yeah. shrill, it's pretty bananas on such a, what seems like such a weak hand. Now, I'm curious as to what the exact life totals are, because Brandon did come in for a, a refine for 12 last turn that went unanswered. Oh, so we are inverting, and interesting, a howl from beyond and a rift bind. That's two arcane damage dealt to Brandon, but that's... If Brandon's holding some blues, he's thrilled at that. Because those two cards on their own are a solid enough combo. Yeah, it's... Surprising interesting that he didn't. Yeah, interesting that he didn't banish the the minnowism, which is right on the top there. I know attack action wise, he didn't really have any any options. But is he trying to play a a blood debt game and have it spiral out of control for Brandon? If so, I feel like two shackles is maybe a bit early. And I mean, Brandon missed on on this turn shackle anyways. So he basically just gave him the two cards that he probably would have missed, or that he missed on anyways. Seven damage from pitching a blue. Yeah. Ooh, and is that a Tome of Findel in hand there? It is. Very good yeah, tactic. Okay. Just starvo. I mean, hey, it's never going to be bad off of Creepers, right? It's playable in the mirror you're playing with four card hands. It lets you cycle through, find some other stuff. So it seems we've got updated life totals here 16 to 22. Um. Although Brandon is down his husk, though so that six life difference is closer to a twelve life difference. But it is his go, and he does have five cards. Still no arsenal to target with the CNC. Yeah, that is always a feels bad moment. But I mean, it's still six damage, two resources. Which yeah. may have been a solid option for him until Kelvin gave him seven damage for three resources off of Howl Riftbind, right? He did finish a so, reclamation. I don't know if um, I'm surprised that makes a list in the mirror here. Yeah, I mean, are you just trying to up your on-hit threat density? Try to slow down one of their shackles. It's just, it's such an expensive card. It is an expensive card, and I was going to say, you know, if you're tutoring up blue minnowisms, then sure, but that means your the other card in your four-card hand has to be a three attack or lower if you're also holding the runic to proc off the little, because you can't show the, the seven power. <clears throat> We're rearranging the board, make sure we're getting it all right. He does it the way I do it. I don't like I like to have my weapon in the center and my hero off to the side. Fair enough. I mean maybe he's trying to channel a bit of you here. Okay. <laughs> So we're seeing Belittle bounding, pitching the mob. Now, I'm assuming we're going to go for a blue minnowism here to help pay for what's in the banished zone. But 
if the rest of his hand is blue, maybe we see the red. I mean, maybe we see the red anyways, just because it makes Rift find a plus four, which is very nice. Depends on how flush he is with the rest of his hand. Those are, it's definitely yeah. a red bounding he showed. And I mean, you know what? At the end of the day, the fact that you get to choose between the red and the blue, and both are amazing answers for what's in your bandage zone right now, is, you know, it, it's a fantastic situation for Brandon. It's a powerful combination. Probably, I wouldn't doubt if more decks attempt to fit it in. I mean, it's very good. It's been dominating commoner. <clears throat> Because that's relevant to this tournament. Can't say I've played any commoner yet. Yeah. So do we creepers tome right now? Just to see what we draw into if that affects the rest of the hand? I feel like you probably want to get the Tome into Arsenal this turn and then Creepers it out next turn. Mm. To at least uh, better from the life gain as well, as long as you don't need the resources. Yeah, I mean, but at 16 life, the question becomes, Are you? Are do you have one more turn to spare? Uh, with the armor he has available? I mean, he has basically three armor on tap, so... I don't see why not. Yeah. Okay, Rift Bind for just three. It looks like. Interesting. So I, I'm now assuming that that's, that's probably a red minnowism. Otherwise, I, I would have probably expect him to, to pay for the howl into the rift vine. Unless he's planning on howling C and C to make it 9, but there's no on hit from that, so... At that point, you're just losing a damage. Oh, oh no, okay. He's he's creepersing it to, to get a, an extra action point, okay. So I guess it's Zord and CNC. Arsenal the... I would have killed him. Arsenal the... Tell I know you won't have resources for that. It looks like the red bounding is probably going to Arsenal. CNC for 9, Zord for 4. Or is it pitch bounding CNC for 9? What is the house doing in hand right now? Unless, did he play out the Howl at instant speed before Rift Vine resolved? No, it, no, okay, he didn't. Alright, so this is now a CNC for 9. Yeah, and uh, I'm guessing he's just going to keep the attack for Arsenal and swing the sword to keep the boots around one more turn. Yeah, may as well. Interesting. Well, he opened the turn with the little, so I'm, I'm wondering why the Howl wasn't played at instant speed before the Rift Bind came out, because that's just one point of damage. And it, there's no on hit for CNC right now. You're right, it is just one lost point of damage. <laughs> All right, so now nobody has a hus. Brandon's got a little bit of life and an arsenal. So I think it'll be very interesting. He has an art of war in hand, so I'd say this game really comes down to these three flips right here. I was I was gonna say these three flips. Um, does he have anything good to banish from the art of war? I couldn't see at the speed he was flicking. Didn't tell, so he's got one hit of bounding and a howl. Yeah. Wow. Good enough to put a lot of pressure onto Brandon, yep. and really limit limit him to seeing what he flops next turn. 
to see if he's still in this game. So my eyes would be rolling right now if I was uh, sitting across from <laughs> those flips. I mean, it, it, has Brandon hit a single flip? I don't, I don't think, think so. so. I think the only two cards no. I have to play from Banish were the ones off of Art of War and the ones that were re-gifted to him through Invert. I mean, you know what? Props props to Kelvin for the homie move of, of giving him those solid cards off the Invert. <laughs> That's such a nice Banish zone. Two boundings and a howl with creepers online. And it looks like a Shadow Puppetry in hand. This is, uh, I hate yeah. to say it, but real, real bad for Brandon. He'll have all the action points he needs here. Looks like one bounding is at least red. The other one I can't tell if it's yellow or red. Yeah, unfortunately colors are, are eluding me a little bit. Is there a second blue in Kelvin's hand? Or I guess it... Well, there's a shrill, which I'm assuming is a pitchable color. I'm assuming he's thinking about how to sequence and where to put the shadow puppetry. It'll depend on how right. many resources you have in hand. Yeah, it depends on how many resources he has, because ideally you want to save it for as late as possible. But if it's your only reasonable non-attack. Oh, interesting. He's playing them all out in one go. Alright, so this is going to be a... Yeah, it's, uh, okay. Is it going to be a, a big bounding demigod? That's for sure. I guess he figures he's just going to shackle the next one of those we scored after. As long as, uh, yeah. I don't know. I, I think I may have preferred to 11. You need three dice to represent it. What a world. Um, oh, 12. We're kind of the art of war. No, nope, 11. Yeah, we could just flip one dice to six and leave the other one as five. Probably works too. Yeah, but three dice is more intimidating. So it's an important consideration. I, I think I may have liked to have seen the Shadow Puppetry, this attack be a shackle and then Shadow Puppetry the next one. Just in case, it, it gives Brandon the space to maybe commit blocks to this. You have a higher chance of, of blocking the puppetry. But I think this way you're you're playing face up, but you're playing more damage on the board in one go, right? Yeah, this is basically saying uh, block this because if I flip something good, you lose. If I flip a rift find, it's over for you. Yeah, like and realistically, the question now: how many two blocks is Brandon holding, and how many three block attacks does he need to keep for next turn? I mean, I see a bounding in hand there. It's like a bounding, a minnowism, and hard to tell. After that, maybe a ghostly visit. Yeah, something shadowy on the right. Or his right. Because it's unlikely you're blocking all 11 of this. No, I don't think you're at the point now where if you just slap down your whole hand and block, pretty much just give me the game. I mean, maybe keep a blue, hope you flip a non-attack, and then play out the bounding from Arsenal Rosetta. But, I mean, that's that's putting everything on a hope and a prayer. I think your, your better hope here is to hope that that Shadow Puppetry misses. Because, I mean, there's only so many hits, and... It looks like Kelvin's gotten most of them at this point, so. Yeah, I don't think armor is... Yeah, I don't think armor is a, a very objectionable decision here. Yeah. But we're going to see... We're updating life totals. We're 
Not All right, there we go. <clears throat> or an invert. Ooh, an invert would sting right now. So that's the chain broken. Probably going to have to use those gloves again this turn. We're going to be seeing, I'm assuming, Bounding Sword. Uh, or possibly Room Champ Bounding Sword, if we've got a blue in hand. It's a red down into. Oh, it's it's yellow. Plus one from the art of war. Yeah. I mean, we're not threatening lethal quite yet, but we're really close. I mean, now we're at that very finicky point where it comes down to you want good banishes, but you don't want them to be that good because a single point of blood that's stuck in your in your banish zone is gonna maybe be the decider. Yeah, that turn one, all non-attack action. And really hurt this game for him. Yeah. It's unfortunate. No tempo, and then your opponent starts on a free shackle, basically. Which landed. <laughs> yeah, so that's the blue. So we're going to see the rune chant Rosetta. That's going to be for five. I can't imagine Brandon wants to go to one here. But. He could go to two if he blocks with the grass, keeps the hand, and hopes he can clear his entire blood debt. You're definitely taking three from the arcane. Yeah. Oh, and the creepers. Yeah. I mean, he knows more about his hand than we do. Let's see if Brandon can get his his first hits of the game here. Oh. I mean, Ghostly's nice. At least it doesn't have a prerequisite of needing a non-attack to play it. Exactly. Although I think he does have the non-attacks this turn, doesn't he? Or oh no, he's got he's got a Ghostly. Bounding, and I can't tell what the last bit is shadow play. Oh, okay. For five. And then a bounding, and then a sword, I'm guessing. Not bad. This is the red bounding in our yeah. What's that last card in his hand? Oh, I guess he might be able to make a rune chant if he can't play it out, but. Yeah. I don't know so if long you want to make a. Because he's technically on two life right now, right? Um, he, yeah. Three. Oh, no, sorry. He, he, yeah, he's on three. Yeah, so. I believe. If you have the blue, oh. you definitely don't make a run chain. Just in fear that uh, Calvin has an invert in hand. Yeah. Then you just die on the spot. I mean, you do, but I think we've we've accounted for two inverts from Kelvin already so far, right? We saw him pitch one super early. We saw him play one a couple turns ago. Yeah, there's. Five, I mean, you, that means one unaccounted for. I mean, yes, yeah, it's, it's one unaccounted for, but it's it's one point of known damage. Um, you know, and and we're at the point where, yeah, it's it's a it's going to be a finicky blood debt thing where you know whose husk ticks them out more. Or does Kelvin, you know, flip four blood deaths and only play out two of them kind of thing? How many cards did Kelvin just block? Uh, one from hand, plus the equips, I believe. So he has three cards in hand? I think so. So Kelvin's taking three here, so he's going down to three. Yeah, so Kelvin's going down to three after that Rosetta swing. That puts them both at equal life. Skullcap's not even an option. Yeah, I think it's just for fear of... 
three card hand draw. Oh, hopefully, see what he gets on the shackles. One hit, just one, the ghostly, which is really good. Yeah, and then Brandon would have lost one to the husk there. Two, so it's three, two. Yeah, see, this is... Did he draw the double invert? Never know. I mean, he arsenaled something. It may have been the invert, because otherwise, why wouldn't you just generate the rune hand? Because you're, you're bringing Kelvin to equal life to you anyways, right? If he's going to invert you, you're, you're inverted. Yeah. Well, Kelvin has been a wisdom cap and scroll into the third part. So he's definitely going to be able to attack swing the sword. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and Ghostly's coming out of Banished as well. I think it's... Uh, Brennan's I think it's only hope here, really, as far as I can tell, is try to go to one, keep one, one blue in hand, and pray you flip two in the I mean, that's pretty much. Yeah, I mean, that's he's gonna have to give up a lot of his hand, blocking, you know, any amount of arcane that Kelvin comes in with this turn, right? You need to you need to commit a blue to Arcanite Skullcap, because for that inevitable Rosetta swing. Captain's call. Yeah, so this is going to be a ghostly for six. Uh, depends on the color. So it might be, if it's a blue one, it doesn't even target the ghostly. I've seen that mistake happen before. Yeah. It's either four or six. No, we're, we're, it looked like he was reaching for the guy. Yeah, I mean, it, it, the main thing here is that Rosetta's turned on, and it uh, looks like Brandon's got a lot of two blocks in hand, so maybe the four or six does matter. Is that a runic that he's looking to block with? There is. So we're going down to one. Yeah, so that was a blue captain's call, it looks like. Yep, blue captain's call. Yeah, so... Uh, that's okay, so he selected go again on it. And now the... Yeah. The bounding is targeted by it. And, yeah, that's the game. Chain beats chain wow. in the last event. Chain is playable. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, just about last serious sanctioned event at least. <laughs> Happy to see well, you. This is, yeah, it's he's he's just the big kid on the playground when it comes to so many of the other aggro decks, right? I think it's it's good to to let them come out and have a chance to play this time around. It's nice to have the deck.